I'm delighted and honored to be asked by Creighton Holder to play for you today. And as I was envisioning the program of some of my favorite Advent and Christmas carols, I realized that there was a chronology to them in the journey toward the manger, as well as connections. This feeling of connection, especially nowadays, is so important during these strange and uncertain times. We've had to connect with each other in very creative and even undreamt of ways. Our beloved old traditions are being given new life and new traditions are being born. In this holy season, we just passed the longest and darkest night, the winter solstice. So I believe it's fitting for me to begin with one of the darkest and most haunting of Christmas carols, the Coventry Carol. This carol was performed in 16th century Coventry, England in a mystery play. As you know, after Herod heard that the Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem, he issued a decree that all male babies under two years old were to be slain. This was the massacre of the innocents. I think it illustrates that even the most joyous event, the birth of Jesus, was preceded, like the resurrection, by unspeakable pain. The Coventry Carol portrays in a lullaby rhythm a heartbreaking farewell of mothers to their male babies. This arrangement is by one of my former students, Kathleen Ryan. I think Kathleen captures some of the anxiety and the grief of this unspeakable event.
I chose the next piece, J.S. Bach's beautiful Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring from Cantata 147 to depict in music the beautiful announcement of the angel Gabriel to Mary that she was going to be the mother of Christ. This beloved version I'm about to play was arranged by the great pianist Dame Myra Hess. She was best known and remembered for her concert series during the Blitz in London and for performing underground concerts during air raids in World War II. Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring, arranged by Myra Hess. journey to the major, I selected another piece by J.S. Bach, his prelude in B-flat major. I believe with its rippling and sparkling passages, it captures some of the joy of the moment of that stunning event in history, the birth of the baby Jesus.
Coincidentally, after over 800 years, many of us have just witnessed what may have been the star of Bethlehem, the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter. After the angels announced to the shepherds of the impending birth of Christ, the shepherds followed that star to Bethlehem and found the baby Jesus. So I will play for you an evocative arrangement, again by Kathleen Ryan, of the wonderful Christmas spiritual, Somebody Talking About Jesus. To complete our journey to the manger today, I'll play an arrangement of the beloved and very familiar carol, O Holy Night. It was composed by Adolf Adam in 1847. It comes in many, many versions, but this particular one I'm about to play is very dear to me. Several years ago, when our mezzo-soprano, Christy Lynn Brown, was unavailable to sing this beautiful carol, in our Salem College candlelight service, I asked my friend David McHugh, who taught film composition at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts, if he would write an arrangement of this beautiful carol. I think his arrangement so well captures the mystery and the magnificence of that holiest of nights in the Christian calendar. Thank you so much for accompanying me on this journey to the manger. I send my heartfelt wishes to all of you for a very healthful, peaceful, and very Christmas. And thank you for listening. <laughs>